The United States is the largest producer of poultry meat in the world. This amounts to 17% of the global poultry production. China and Brazil are also big producers, but America's consumption of poultry and poultry products is huge. On average, Americans consume over 95 pounds of chicken and 280 eggs per person each year. This is more chicken consumed than anywhere else in the world. The U.S. poultry industry boasts nearly 520 million chickens and nearly 225 million turkeys in its inventory at any one time. But each year it produces a staggering 8.5 billion broilers, almost 100 billion eggs, and 240 million turkeys. These numbers are huge and poultry business in the U.S. is big business. But how does it work? Who are the farmers and what are the profits like? Most of America's chickens are grown as broilers for the meat industry. Iowa, Ohio, and Indiana are the three states that produce the most chicken. In 2021, Iowa alone farmed 60 million chickens. When producing broilers, farmers usually buy in day-old chicks. These are nearly all housed indoors. They are fed chick crumb and growers pellets as they mature. The environment in which they are kept is monitored and controlled closely. Commercial farmers have designed their broiler units in the most efficient way possible. The heat is kept high so that the birds don't waste any energy on keeping warm. All energy is used on growth. The light-dark cycles are dictated by the farmer, with more light than dark to encourage more time spent eating and therefore growing, and less time sleeping. Broilers can be packed into these units in their thousands. Some units house up to 40,000 birds. Legally, chickens are only required to have one to one and a half feet of space each. After about six weeks, the broilers will be fully grown. They will be shipped out of their housing and off for slaughter. This is an incredibly short time period for chickens to reach maximum weight. Pure breeds that are allowed to grow naturally typically take 20 weeks to grow to maturity. But in the commercial industry, Farmers need to see a return on their investment. Setting up a broiler farm is very expensive due to the cost of the units themselves and the running cost required for the heating and lighting. Maximizing profits means maximizing growth and minimizing time. As well as broilers providing meat, laying hens provide large numbers of eggs. The United States is the second biggest producer of eggs in the world alongside India and behind China. In the 1940s and 50s, U.S. egg production was on the rise. Free-range birds were replaced by caged birds. This allowed farmers to keep more hens, collect eggs easier, and kept waste material contained. However, animal welfare suffered as a result. Today, caged hens are all subjected to cramped conditions, but some have been given more space over the years and environmental enrichment. The majority of egg-laying hens in the U.S. are battery hens. This means that they are caged and are allocated the equivalent space of one piece of 8.5 by 11 inch paper. One grade up from this are barns which house hundreds of chickens. They have slightly more space and are technically not caged birds, but they don't have access to sunlight, grass, or fresh air. Their environment is artificial, but there is some enrichment such as perches and nest boxes. Only some free range hens have the ability to touch grass and see sunlight. They sometimes have access to outdoor space, which enriches their lives massively. Iowa, Ohio, and Indiana produce the most eggs in the U.S., and consumers are becoming more aware and more concerned about the welfare of agricultural animals. There is a growing demand for cage-free poultry meat and eggs. In 2021, almost 30% of eggs produced in the U.S. were from cage-free hens. This percentage is likely to rise over the coming years as farmers try to fulfill the concerns and demands of their consumers. The majority of turkeys are also housed indoors in environmentally controlled sheds. They are also generally overcrowded with little enrichment for their needs. They typically take 14 to 18 weeks to reach slaughter weight. Minnesota, North Carolina, and Arkansas are America's biggest turkey producers. In America, poultry farmers are rarely completely independent. Only a handful of companies control the U.S. poultry market. This is largely dominated by two giants in the industry, Tyson Foods, and JBS USA. They own most of the production line from the feed, the hatcheries, the transportation, and the slaughterhouses. They even pay for on-farm medical expenses. This gives the farmers very little say in what they do. Their job is to run their farms as efficiently as possible to make as much profit as possible. There have been concerns over the record-breaking profits made by these companies with little or no pay rise for the farmers themselves. 
The idea for companies to own poultry production in order to control it began in the 1960s. Big companies also owned the poultry farms as well as everything else in the supply chain. But it didn't take long for them to realize that farming is a big risk. Most of them found that the farm was the least profitable part of the whole supply chain and contracted out the farm. Since then, they have kept control of the other processes which gives them large profits with minimal risk. So why is North America so successful at producing poultry? The amount of chicken produced and consumed in the U.S. has been growing since the 1940s. It surpassed pork availability in 1996 and beef in 2010. The U.S. have become world leaders in poultry production due to a few factors. Firstly, they are able to grow the poultry feed themselves without the cost of importing it. This primarily consists of soybean protein and corn, which grows well in the States. Did you know we have a video about soybean production as well? You can watch it here. Secondly, they have some of the best genetically improved poultry in the world. They have managed to breed the most efficient birds in order to use as little feed as possible before the chickens or turkeys reach slaughter weight. These key factors, along with the public's growing desire for chicken meat, have caused the American poultry market to explode. It is hugely important to the economy of the country. The poultry industry provides employment for millions of people in North America. From farmers and processors to distributors and retailers, the popularity of such an affordable source of protein has seen poultry production rise significantly since the Second World War. At the time, most of the beef and pork was used for America's troops and allies. This was when poultry became popular in the United States as farmers saw a gap in the market and a potential to fill the nation's needs for a source of animal protein. Since then, there has been no stopping the rise in poultry production and consumption, in particular chicken. Sales of fresh chicken meat in the U.S. exceed $13 billion each year. Turkey exports amount to over 550 million pounds worth of meat. Over two-thirds of America's exported turkeys are shipped to Mexico. 20% of turkey that is exported globally comes from the U.S. This amounts to $287 million. The U.S. also exports a lot of its chicken. Over 7 billion pounds worth of broiler meat was exported from the States, which equates to almost $38 billion. There are monthly and yearly fluctuations in egg prices. In 2022, they reached a high of just over $5 per dozen and a low of $1.20. Farmers have blamed the avian flu outbreak for a rise in egg prices, but the margins they gained from this price inflation cannot be entirely down to the disease. The cost of feed and labor have risen over 2022 and into 2023, which all have a knock-on effect for what the consumer pays. Although poultry farming provides a valuable and relatively cheap protein source for millions of people, it is not without its criticism. In less economically developed countries, chickens are reared by small holders and subsistence farmers. In the U.S., however, it has turned into mass production where thousands of birds are reared in a single shed or a unit at a time. In just under 60 years, broiler production in the U.S. has shot up 1,400%. This incredible rise in production has seen the emergence of factory-style farms. The rise from 580 million broilers in the 1950s to over 9 billion today has resulted in a dramatic decrease in broiler producers. Small farms have been squeezed out to make way for the more efficient, more profitable super farms. And where chicken farming was once spread across one million nationwide farms, it now only resides in just 15 states. With such a rapid increase in production, environmental measures have struggled to keep up. Waste, which comprises mostly feces and soiled litter, is spread on surrounding fields as manure. If this is done excessively, then runoff from rainwater can make its way into nearby water systems. This can wreak havoc on water bodies and their ecosystems. If this is managed properly and animal density is limited, then the environmental impact can be minimized. Although these factory-style farms have grown through consumer demand, animal welfare and the environment have both suffered as a result. But there are ways of improving the lives of the animals that are grown to feed us, as well as protect the environment on which we all depend. If we farm in an environmentally and sustainable way, then we can go a long way to achieving this. Australia is a minor producer of goat meat in the world, but it is the biggest exporter and millions of people rely on its goat meat industry. It accounts for over a third of the global goat meat exports. 
And although it only produces 0.4% of the global goat meat supply, it is the biggest exporter of goat meat in the world. China is by far the biggest producer, producing 38% of the meat globally, but keeping the vast majority for its own domestic consumption. In 2020, Australia produced 15,500 tons of goat meat, the majority of which was exported to the United States, South Korea, and Taiwan. In fact, almost two-thirds was shipped to the states where the Latino population are particularly fond of the meat. This export alone amounted to about 90 million Australian dollars. Australia has about 2.3 million feral goats, which are used for meat. This compares to 1 billion globally. Each year, just over 1 million of these Australian rangeland goats are sent for slaughter. There is less of a demand for goat meat domestically, with 80% of all that's produced being shipped abroad. This is largely due to an uncertainty and unfamiliarity around the meat and how to cook it. But goat farming is an attractive industry for Australian farmers due to the high value of the meat. Its value has increased over the past few years, and it reached a record high price in 2020, fetching a price of 820 cents per kilogram of meat, which is higher than both beef and lamb. And in 2021, that figure rose again. So why is goat farming so big in Australia? With the demand in goat meat only increasing globally, Australian goat farmers are growing with it. Farmers are turning to goat farming because of the resilient nature of the animals and their ability to cope with the harsh Australian climate. Victoria and Queensland are the biggest producers of goats in Australia. With a rise in goat farming interests, there has been an increase in production plants to keep up with the demand. In Western Australia, a 7,000% increase in goat production followed the reopening of a production plant in the state. With the growing interest in the industry, how are goats farmed in Australia? 95% of goats in Australia are produced in the southern rangelands, with approximately 70% in western New South Wales. The rangelands are characterized by low and sporadic rainfall, arid soil and little to no arable farming, but Australia has developed the rangeland goat, which is well suited to the conditions. Originally from Europe, these goats have now adapted to life in an inhospitable environment. They are tough and hardy. The feral goat population has skyrocketed. The first few that were brought to mainland Australia, along with the early settlers, escaped and have been surviving in the harsh conditions ever since. Australians can muster, or catch, these goats and sell them to the abattoir. It requires very little management costs, only the ability to round up the herds and pen them for a short time before they are shipped off to slaughter. Some use dogs and quad bikes, others use helicopters. Many farmers are turning to this method of farming as it is highly lucrative at the moment, and demand for goat meat remains very high. The adaptation to the rangeland environment means that these goats can maintain high fertility even in dry climates, often giving birth to multiples rather than singles. This keeps their population numbers high. Those that are caught and kept for farmers to begin their own goat farms require relatively little maintenance. Improvements in their management over the years has resulted in increased carcass weight, quality, and consistency. Because of the methods used, goat farming has relatively low startup costs. As long as water is provided and plenty of feed, they require relatively little in terms of maintenance. They are naturally resistant to a range of diseases and don't need to be sheared like sheep. They eat a wider variety of feed than other livestock, which means that farmers are less susceptible to fluctuations in feed prices. When it comes to the sale of goats, they are simpler than other animals too. Goat meat fetches the same price per kilo regardless of the animal. It doesn't matter whether it's from a billy goat, nanny goat, 10-year-old or a 1-year-old. There is a blanket price for goat meat across Australia. The same can't be said for other animals like sheep, which when it comes to slaughter are penalized for being too light, too heavy, or too old. Installing infrastructure is one of the main startup costs. Goats can jump sheep fencing and crawl underneath it. They need sturdy, high, barbed wire fences which can cost a significant amount to set up. On top of this, 
They are quite destructive in their appetite. They will both graze and browse and have been blamed for a loss in biodiversity and deterioration of grasslands. As such, it is often recommended that farmers farm goats in rotation, allowing fields to heal and regrow between grazing. After being sent to the abattoir, goat carcasses are transported abroad. Almost 99% of them are exported as frozen whole carcasses. So, with the growing trade in goat meat for Australians, what support is available for those who want to take the plunge into this lucrative industry? The government is recognizing that goat farming contributes considerably to the Australian economy, and it provides an income for a growing number of people. As such, they are plowing money into goat farming with the hope of optimizing its production. Meat and Livestock Australia have teamed up with the University of Queensland to conduct a $3.7 million research project into goat production. The project aims to gather data on goat farming and use this to improve goat reproduction, growth, welfare and production within Australia's herds. The New South Wales government has recently ploughed $1.2 million into goat farming. Its aim is to try to modernize and standardize goat farming across the state. It will improve biosecurity in the production system and aim to improve reproduction, grazing management, genetics and animal health. Just like all industries, goat farming and goat meat production has its challenges. What are these and what can be done about them? As is the case with most agricultural industries, goat farming is reliant on the climate. Recently, Australia has suffered droughts which severely affected goat production. But the goat herds have bounced back and are on the rise again. There have since been favorable conditions with ample rainfall, which has really helped the industry recover. But even when drought struck and numbers were down and prices increased, the demand for goat meat never let up. At the moment, goat production in Australia is highly volatile and seasonal. It is hoped that with an increase in investment and by standardizing the industry somewhat, there will be less volatility across the production line. There is also a drive to try and encourage Australians to consume goat meat at home. But this can be challenging in a nation of sheep lovers. In fact, Australians consume the second greatest amount of lamb per capita in the world, second only to Kazakhstan. It may be a simple change in the wording associated with Australia's abundant herd of goats. Previously, they were referred to as feral goats, but the meat industry has now changed that to free-roaming rangeland goats. This title certainly has more appeal. Despite being a highly nutritious protein source with a delicious lamb-like flavor, this lean meat is unpopular with the general public. Other parts of the world, like parts of Asia and the Caribbean, eat goat regularly, and it is even considered a delicacy to some. But cooking goat meat lends itself to long, slow-cooking methods. Barbecuing the meat for a few minutes, like beef or lamb, doesn't work so well. The meat is less fatty than lamb and can become tough if not cooked properly. Australians are world-renowned for their love of barbecue, but goat meat isn't the right type of meat to grill in this way. Some of Australia's butchers, however, are beginning to see a rise in their goat meat sales as more people are tempted to sample the different cuts of meat and experiment with exotic cuisine. Many Australians are open to consuming goat's milk and cheese, but goat meat is taking a little longer to reach the dinner table. If Australians view wintertime as a time for slow, wet cooking methods used to cook goat stews much in the same way that springtime is associated with lamb, then goat meat could become a staple seasonal food. Today, Denmark stands as a remarkable example in the world of pig farming, as the country is home to over 5,000 pig farms. More astonishing, perhaps, is the statistic that Denmark is home to more pigs than people. These farms collectively nurture millions of pigs every year, making a significant contribution to the country's economy. The impact of Danish pork extends beyond its borders as it finds its way to dinner tables across the globe. This global reach has established Denmark as a powerhouse in the international meat trade. Tracing the roots of Denmark's pig farming reveals a journey that began centuries ago with small-scale traditional farming. Over time, this small Nordic nation has steadily risen to prominence. Historical records indicate that in the early 19th century, the number of pigs was relatively modest. 
primarily serving local communities. However, as demand grew, both domestically and internationally, Denmark's approach to pig farming began to transform. By the mid-20th century, the numbers had surged significantly, with statistics showing a tenfold increase in pig populations compared to a century earlier. This exponential growth mirrored the advancements in farming techniques and animal husbandry practices. The evolution was marked not just by the increasing number of pigs, but also by the sophisticated methods employed to raise them. At the heart of this transformation lies a unique set of challenges, particularly in managing the expanse of free-range farms that are spread across thousands of acres. Danish farmers have skillfully navigated issues like disease control, which becomes increasingly complex in open environments. For instance, in tackling diseases, the adoption of rotational grazing has become widespread. This practice, now implemented on over 70% of free-range farms, allows sections of land to recover, reducing the spread of diseases by a notable 40% compared to traditional methods. Additionally, the introduction of natural supplements has seen a 30% reduction in antibiotic use. The Danish government, recognizing the importance of these practices, has provided substantial support. Financial aid has been directed towards approximately 60% of these farms, facilitating the adoption of sustainable methods and ensuring the longevity and success of Denmark's pig farming industry. These changes are exemplified by the story of Anders, a third-generation farmer from South Denmark. Anders' journey is a reflection of the larger shift in Danish pig farming. He recalls his grandfather's traditional methods of pig rearing, but with the growing demand for ethically produced meat, Anders expanded his farm with a keen focus on animal welfare. Transitioning to free-range farming brought its unique challenges. To mitigate this, Anders adopted rotational grazing, allowing land to recover and reducing disease spread. He also invested in natural supplements to enhance the immunity of his pigs, a practice less common in conventional farming. Another inspiring story with this movement is that of Jensen's Farm, a beacon of success in the free-range pig industry. Jensen's Farm began its journey over a decade ago when Peter Jensen, a third-generation farmer, made the bold decision to shift from traditional to free-range farming. His vision was driven by a commitment to animal welfare and environmental sustainability. Today, the farm is home to over 20,000 pigs that roam freely. Peter reminisces about the early days, filled with learning curves and challenges. His dedication to creating an ecosystem where pigs could thrive has not only improved the health and happiness of the animals, but also the quality of the pork. This has led to a surge in demand, both locally and internationally. Jensen's farm now produces twice the amount of pork than in its pre-free-range days, with exports stretching across Europe. Initially, skeptics perceived the shift towards free-range farming as a financial gamble, fraught with higher costs and greater risks. However, as consumer demand for ethically produced pork surged, these pioneering farms began to find their economic footing. The transition gradually revealed its long-term viability. This shift in farming practices, while rooted in ethical and environmental concerns, has proven to be not just a morally sound choice, but an economically wise one, demonstrating that what's beneficial for animal welfare and the planet can also be profitable. The transformation of the pig farming industry began as a whisper in the early 2000s. From a few hundred farms adopting free-range standards, the movement grew exponentially. By the mid-2010s, over 30% of Danish pig farms had embraced these methods, a striking increase from just a decade earlier. Pigs, which had previously been confined to cramped indoor spaces, now roamed freely in outdoor paddocks. This significant increase in free-range areas meant that over 2 million pigs in Denmark were experiencing a stark contrast to their previous living conditions. Each free-range pig, from the moment of birth, is nurtured under vigilant care, differing markedly from their counterparts in intensive farming systems. Unlike the accelerated growth cycles often seen in conventional rearing, these pigs develop at a natural pace, aligning more closely with their innate growth patterns. During the summer months, the pigs engage in mud wallowing, an activity crucial for their skin health and temperature regulation. This behavioral need is quantitatively met in the free-range settings, very different from the limitations faced in confined setups. In colder months, they have access to shelters. These shelters are a blend of simplicity and functionality, offering warmth and protection without confining the animals. The impact of dynamic interaction between the pigs and their environments on the pigs' well-being was substantial. Studies revealed that free-range pigs exhibited 40% fewer health issues compared to their counterparts in conventional settings. Moreover, 
the mortality rate in free-range farms dropped by 15%. This improvement in animal welfare did not go unnoticed. Consumers, increasingly conscious of ethical farming practices, began to show a marked preference for pork from free-range farms. This change in consumer behavior was reflected in sales figures, with a 25% rise in the demand for free-range pork products nationally. The export of Danish free-range pork saw an impressive growth of 18%. The environmental benefits were equally remarkable. The implementation of free-range practices has led to a 20% reduction in water usage on these farms. By allowing pigs to roam and forage in natural environments, there is a lesser dependence on water-intensive feeding practices common in conventional setups. Furthermore, the natural behaviors of the pigs, such as rooting and foraging, contributed positively to soil health. This ecological synergy resulted in a 10% increase in soil fertility in areas surrounding free-range farms. The adoption of rotational grazing techniques further enhanced these benefits, promoting biodiversity and reducing soil erosion, reducing the need for chemical fertilizers, which have been cut down by an impressive 30%. In Denmark, farming technology has been designed to enhance the natural experience of free-range pig farming. About 75% of Danish farms now employ automated feeding systems, ensuring optimal nutrition for the pigs, while reducing waste by approximately 20%. Advanced health monitoring systems, adopted by over 60% of farms, have led to a notable 30% decrease in disease incidence. Additionally, technological advancements have enabled better land management. Approximately 80% of free-range farms utilize GPS-guided machinery, minimizing soil compaction and preserving the integrity of the free-range environment. This precision farming approach has resulted in a remarkable 25% increase in land efficiency, allowing more space for the pigs to roam freely. As our journey through Denmark's vast free-range pig farms comes to a close, we're left with a vivid image of a sustainable future taking shape. These farms, stretching across lush green fields, are more than just a source of high-quality pork. They're a testament to Denmark's commitment to ethical and environmentally conscious farming. It's a story of transformation, where respect for animal welfare and the environment leads to a harmonious balance. One can't help but feel optimistic about what the future of farming can hold when guided by the principles of sustainability and respect for nature. In the vast and diverse Australian outback, spanning over 2.5 million square miles of rugged terrain, lies a pivotal sector of agricultural production, merino sheep farming. This region, known for its extreme climates, ranging from arid deserts to cool highlands, supports over 60,000 farms and over 70 million merino sheep, a figure that underscores the scale of this industry. Merino sheep, renowned for their exceptional wool, are responsible for a significant portion of Australia's wool exports. Annually, the country produces about 345,000 tons of raw wool, with a notable percentage of this coming from merino sheep. This production contributes remarkably to the national economy, with the wool export sector alone generating revenues exceeding 3 billion Australian dollars each year. The merino wool industry, furthermore, supports tens of thousands of jobs across rural Australia, from farming and shearing to processing and exporting. These sheep have adapted remarkably to the challenging conditions of the outback, showcasing not just resilience, but thriving in environments with temperatures fluctuating between freezing cold and scorching heat. The wool produced here, known for its fine quality and softness, accounts for approximately 80% of the world's fine apparel wool, making Australia the leading exporter in this sector. The industry is not just a testament to the adaptability of the merino breed, but also to the scale of agricultural enterprise thriving in one of the world's most extreme environments. In the transformation of the merino breed in Australia, we witness a remarkable tale told through numbers, a testament to the skill and dedication of Australian farmers. This story begins in the late 18th century with the introduction of the merino sheep to Australian shores. Initially, these sheep were valued for their adaptability and quality wool, but key to this evolution has been the focus on enhancing wool quality through careful and strategic breeding practices. Australian farmers, over generations, have meticulously selected traits such as wool fineness, density, and length, leading to significant improvements in the quality of wool each sheep produces. 
Thanks to these breeding efforts, the numbers are telling. Detailed records indicate that average wool yield per sheep has increased by approximately 20% over the last two decades. The quality of the wool, measured in terms of fiber diameter and crimp, has seen an improvement of around 15%. Furthermore, the average wool fiber diameter has reduced over the years, making the wool softer and more luxurious, leading to a quality highly prized in global markets. Today, Australian Merino wool is renowned for its superior fineness and strength, commanding a premium in international markets, a testament to the successful quantitative enhancements made by farmers in the breeding of this iconic breed. This focus on breeding has also yielded impressive production statistics. The average fleece weight per sheep has increased, a direct result of selective breeding aimed at enhancing wool yield without compromising quality. These advancements are not just about quantity. They represent a fine balance between maintaining the natural resilience of the sheep while optimizing their wool production capabilities. The impact of these efforts extends beyond the farms to the global stage. Australia, thanks to these breeding successes, has positioned itself as one of the world's leading wool producers, commanding a significant share of the global market. On average, Merino sheep live for about 10 to 12 years, a span during which they contribute significantly to wool production. A single Merino sheep can produce up to 9 to 11 pounds of wool per year, with this figure varying depending on age and health. The first shearing, typically occurring at around 6 to 7 months of age, yields lighter fleece, known as lamb's wool, which is highly valued for its softness. As they mature, the wool becomes denser and stronger. Across Australia's approximately 70,000 sheep farms, meticulous flock management is crucial. With an average flock size of about 3,000 sheep per farm, regular health checks, strategic breeding, and careful pasture management are key components of the life cycle management in these vast farming landscapes. The annual shearing of Merino sheep is a critical operation, combining tradition with efficiency. Each year, skilled shearers harvest an impressive quantity of wool. On average, a merino sheep yields about 9 to 13 pounds of wool per shearing. With an estimated population of over 70 million merino sheep, the country produces approximately 761 million pounds of merino wool annually. The shearing process is not just about quantity. It's a meticulous task where speed and precision are essential. Experienced shearers can shear a sheep in just a few minutes, with top shearers averaging up to 200 sheep per day, ensuring the fleece is removed in one continuous piece for optimal quality. Following shearing, the wool undergoes a detailed sorting and grading process, where it is categorized based on quality indicators such as fiber diameter, length, and strength. The finest grades of merino wool, typically with fiber diameters ranging from 16 to 24 microns, are highly valued for their softness and are often earmarked for luxury fashion markets. This high-grade wool represents a significant portion of the overall wool yield, with top-quality fleeces weighing around 11 pounds each. After grading, the wool is scoured to remove impurities, losing about 50% of its weight in the process. The cleaned wool is then carded and spun, transforming approximately 380 million pounds of raw merino wool into high-quality yarn annually, ready for the global textile market. Merino sheep now pivotal to Australia's agricultural landscape, were first introduced to the continent in the late 18th century by European settlers. Initially, the flock sizes were modest, with only a few hundred sheep imported. However, these numbers rapidly expanded, thanks to the Merino's exceptional adaptability to the diverse Australian climate. By the early 19th century, the population had grown exponentially, reaching tens of thousands, this surge was a result of both natural reproduction and continued importation. The wool yield per sheep also saw significant improvement, with selective breeding programs initiated by Australian farmers contributing to this growth. By the mid-20th century, Australia's merino population had soared into the millions, making it one of the world's predominant wool producers. In confronting the unique challenges of merino sheep farming in the Australian outback, several key statistics stand out. The harsh and unpredictable climate, particularly the threat of drought, has been a major concern. Drought conditions occurring with increasing frequency have led to as much as a 30% reduction in pasture availability in some regions. 
this scarcity directly impacts sheep nutrition and wool quality. Additionally, merino sheep are susceptible to various pests and diseases, with prevalence rates of conditions like fly strike and foot rot affecting up to 15% of flocks annually, necessitating vigilant health management. Economically, the wool market experiences significant volatility. Price fluctuations of over 20% within a single season are not uncommon, directly impacting farmers' revenues. These challenges underscore the complexity and the resilience required in merino sheep farming, as farmers navigate environmental and market forces to sustain their livelihoods. In the arid Australian outback, sustainable farming practices have become crucial for the longevity of merino sheep farming. Australian farmers have adopted rotational grazing techniques, resulting in a measurable 20% reduction in soil erosion and a significant improvement in pasture quality. Water conservation efforts have been impactful, with rainwater harvesting and efficient irrigation techniques leading to a 30% decrease in water usage on average. Innovations in animal health management have led to a 15% reduction in common diseases like foot rot and fly strike, thanks to the implementation of proactive health checks and vaccinations. These practices not only enhance the overall health and productivity of the sheep, but also contribute to a 25% increase in wool quality, underscoring the tangible benefits of sustainable farming in the industry. Looking towards the future, merino sheep farming in Australia is poised for significant evolution, underscored by promising statistical forecasts and technological advancements. Analysts predict a steady increase in wool market growth, with projections indicating a rise in global demand for high-quality merino wool. This is expected to lead to a substantial increase in the value and volume of wool exports from Australia. Technologically, the integration of data-driven precision farming is anticipated to revolutionize farm practices. This includes the use of drones for flock monitoring, which could increase efficiency by up to 30% and AI-driven breeding programs predicted to enhance wool quality by 20% over the next decade. Adaptation to climate change is also a key focus, with projections showing that implementation of advanced water conservation techniques could reduce water usage by as much as 40%. These changes reflect a dynamic sector where traditional practices are being augmented by innovative strategies ensuring the sustainability and productivity of merino sheep farming in Australia for years to come. Pork, the quintessential American meat, has been a household favorite for generations, and it's not hard to see why. From bacon to pork chops, this versatile meat is a staple in kitchens across the nation. With over 73 million hogs and pigs on farms from coast to coast, it's clear that the American appetite for pork is here to stay. In fact, on average, each person in the United States consumes over 51 pounds of pork per year. The numbers are simply staggering. In 2021 alone, the U.S. pig industry produced nearly 27 billion pounds of pork, fueling an industry that supports over 53,000 jobs and generates more than $30.6 billion in revenue annually. But what really sets the pork industry apart is its global reach. Recent data up until 2021 shows that the industry is continuing to expand at a remarkable rate, with a record 29% of total pork production being exported to international buyers. That means that almost one out of every three pigs bred and raised in the U.S. is destined for foreign lands. In terms of numbers, an astonishing 7.03 billion pounds of U.S. pork were exported, while only 14.83 pounds were consumed domestically. Put simply, 25% of all U.S. pork finds its way to tables across the world. Behind these impressive numbers are the hard-working farmers who keep the industry humming. So let us take a deep dive into the world of American pork farming and uncover the innovative techniques that American farmers are using to keep this industry thriving. When it comes to pork production in the United States, three states lead the pack, Iowa, Minnesota, and North Carolina. These states are responsible for a significant portion of the pork produced in the country, with Iowa taking the top spot by producing over 23.6 million hogs and pigs in 2022. That's an impressive amount of pork. Minnesota and North Carolina are not far behind, with roughly 8.6 million and 8.2 million hogs and pigs raised, respectively. 
Raising pigs requires careful management, attention to detail, and a great deal of hard work. The first step in the process is selecting a suitable breed. When it comes to selecting the right breed of pigs, farmers are like matchmakers, seeking the perfect match for their farm's climate, location, and market. Popular breeds like Hampshire, Duroc, and Yorkshire are carefully selected for their traits, which are well suited to specific farming conditions. Once chosen, the pigs are brought to the farm and housed in specialized indoor facilities, where every aspect of their environment is carefully controlled to ensure their comfort and well-being. Pigs require a balanced diet to thrive. The feed is a special mixture of grains, such as corn, wheat, and soybeans, along with protein sources like soybean meal, fish meal, and dried whey, tailored to the pig's specific needs. Farmers take into account the pig's age, weight, breed, and stage of development, ensuring that they receive the perfect combination of nutrients to keep them healthy and strong. They also consider any health issues that may arise, such as digestive problems or nutrient deficiencies, to ensure that the pigs receive necessary care. To deliver the feed, specialized equipment is used, including automatic feeding systems that dispense the correct amount of feed at the appropriate time. These computer-controlled systems can be programmed to deliver different amounts and types of feed depending on each pig's individual needs, ensuring that they receive the right amount of nutrition every time. Nonetheless, it's crucial to keep in mind that the U.S. pork producing business isn't really cut and dry. Instead, it is a remarkably large and intricate corporation that employs a wide range of strategies to turn a profit. A farmer may choose to keep an animal through its whole life cycle, from birth to slaughter, or they may choose to raise pigs until they weigh between 10 and 60 pounds. The piglets are later sold to other businesses where they are reared until they are fully grown. Smaller businesses that lack the resources to rear pigs to full maturity frequently perform this. Another common technique is developing pigs to their full meaty potential once they have reached the feeder pig stage. Pigs have a longer biological cycle than broilers, but a shorter one than cattle. A sow or adult female hog can produce slightly more than two litters per year, with each litter consisting of an average of nine piglets. That means hog farmers need to stay on top of the different phases of hog production to ensure they have a steady supply of healthy pigs throughout the year. The appropriate age and weight for a pig slaughter can vary depending on the market and the specific goals of the farmer or producer. In general, pigs are typically slaughtered at around six months of age and weigh between 240 to 270 pounds. However, some farmers may choose to slaughter their pigs at different ages and weights depending on their production goals and market demand. The process of slaughtering pigs is carefully regulated by government agencies to ensure that it is done safely and humanely. At the processing plant, the pigs are first stunned, usually by electrocution or carbon dioxide gas, to render them unconscious and insensitive to pain. They are then bled out and their carcasses are cleaned, skinned, and butchered into different cuts of meat. The meat is then packaged and shipped to grocery stores, restaurants, and other retailers where it is sold to consumers. It is important to note that the meat undergoes rigorous safety and quality inspections at each stage of the processing to ensure that it is safe for human consumption. Despite the economic benefits and efficiency of large-scale pig farming in the United States, concerns have been raised about the welfare of pigs, environmental impact, and use of antibiotics. As we delve deeper into the realities of pig farming in the country, it becomes evident that the living conditions of pigs on the farms are far from ideal. Picture this, row upon row of metal stalls, each holding a pig, thousands of them, packed tightly together, barely able to move. The air is thick with the stench of waste, and the only light comes from fluorescent bulbs above. This is a concentrated animal feeding operation, or CAFO, where the majority of pigs in the United States are raised for meat production. These facilities are designed for maximum efficiency with every inch of space utilized to produce as much meat as possible. But at what cost? The pigs in these facilities are living in cramped, barren conditions without access to natural light or fresh air. They are fed a diet of grain and soybean meal, supplemented with vitamins and antibiotics to promote growth and prevent disease. But the overuse of antibiotics in livestock production is contributing to the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which poses a growing threat to public health. And the disposal of pig waste is another major issue. 
with large amounts of manure produced by these facilities that can contaminate nearby water sources if not properly managed. Perhaps the most concerning aspect of these facilities is the welfare of the pigs themselves. Animal rights advocates argue that the pigs are subjected to cruel and inhumane conditions, including overcrowding, lack of enrichment, and limited mobility. And while some farmers and industry groups have implemented welfare standards and certification programs to improve conditions, the reality is that the vast majority of pigs raised for meat in the United States are still living in these cramped, barren facilities. In conclusion, while pig farming is a sizable business in the United States that creates income and employment, it also faces enormous obstacles that cannot be disregarded. To maintain a sustainable and moral sector, it is important to address concerns about animal welfare, environmental effect, and the excessive use of antibiotics in livestock production. Demand for pig products farmed in more humane and ecological methods is rising as customers become more aware of and concerned about these issues. The capacity of the industry to adjust to these shifting customer tastes and put policies in place that value environmental sustainability and animal welfare will determine the future of pig farming in the United States. Texas, a state synonymous with vast open spaces and a rich history of cattle ranching. With its diverse landscapes ranging from arid deserts to lush grasslands, Texas has been home to the iconic Texas Longhorn. These Longhorns, known for their distinctive horns that can span over six feet, are not just a symbol of Texan heritage, but also a cornerstone of American beef farming. Today, Texas stands proudly as a leader in the cattle industry, providing a home to over two million Longhorns. Texas, a state larger than many countries, dedicates an astonishing portion of its land to cattle ranches making it the epicenter of beef production in the United States. To put it into perspective, the combined acreage of these ranches often exceeds the landmass of entire European nations. Here, cattle ranching is a way of life, a tradition as old as the westward bound pioneers. Have you ever wondered how these many longhorns are raised and cared for in such a massive state? Well, saddle up, because you're about to find out. The 19th century marked a pivotal era for Longhorns. Following the Civil War, Texas found itself with an abundance of cattle, but a devastated economy. This disparity led to the legendary cattle drives of the 1860s and 1870s, where millions of Longhorns were herded north to railheads in Kansas, injecting life back into the Texan economy. The cattle population during this period is estimated to have reached several million. However, by the late 1800s, the introduction of barbed wire and the rise of commercial ranching practices began to reshape the landscape. Longhorn numbers dwindled as ranchers favored other breeds for their meat yield and hardiness. Originating from Spanish cattle brought by explorers in the 16th century, the Texas Longhorn adapted to the diverse Texan environment, evolving into the resilient animal we know today. By the early 18th century, these cattle had multiplied significantly roaming freely across the Texas terrain. Their numbers soared into the thousands, becoming an integral part of the local landscape and economy. Despite this decline, the 20th century saw a resurgence in interest in the Texas Longhorn, fueled by efforts to preserve the breed for its historical significance. Conservationists and cattle enthusiasts began breeding programs, leading to a steady increase in Longhorn populations. Now, let's talk numbers. The significance of raising two million longhorns can't be overstated. These cattle aren't confined to a single ranch. They dot the Texan landscape across numerous ranches and regions. A typical longhorn ranch covers thousands of acres and houses an average of 1,500 longhorn cattle. The ranch, functioning like a well-oiled machine, is a fusion of tradition and modernity, where the age-old practice of cattle rearing meets the efficiencies of contemporary technology. Life on a Texas cattle ranch is demanding, rooted in tradition and built on a deep respect for the land and livestock. A typical day on the ranch begins at dawn. The ranch hands, a skilled team of 10, start their day with a head count, a crucial task to ensure the health and safety of the herd. This process, once time consuming and labor intensive, has been streamlined by the use of RFID tags and GPS tracking 
Each Longhorn is tagged, allowing for easy monitoring of their location and health status, a vital innovation considering the size of the herd and the expanse of the ranch. Feeding the herd is a logistical feat in itself. Each day, approximately 6,000 pounds of feed are distributed across the ranch. This feed is a calculated mix of grains, minerals, and forage designed to meet the nutritional needs of the Longhorns. The feeding process, once a manual and arduous task, is now mechanized. Tractors and feed mixers ensure that the cattle are fed efficiently and consistently, maintaining the herd's health and vigor. In essence, the modern Texas Longhorn Ranch is a blend of scale, efficiency, and technological integration. It stands as a symbol of the state's commitment to maintaining its legacy as a leader in American beef farming, while embracing the innovations necessary to sustain this venerable industry in the 21st century. Technology also plays a pivotal role in the management of the ranch. Drones are used for aerial surveillance, providing a bird's eye view of the sprawling acreage. This not only aids in monitoring the cattle, but also in assessing pasture conditions, identifying areas that require attention, be it irrigation or receding. The ranch's infrastructure, from fencing to water systems, is regularly checked and maintained, ensuring an environment conducive to the health and well-being of the Longhorns. Texas Longhorn cattle farming stands as a substantial pillar in the state's economy. It provides jobs, sustains communities, and supports a network of industries, from cattle feed production to meat processing. As of recent data, the Longhorn industry contributes significantly to the U.S. annual agricultural revenue, generating a total of approximately $12.3 billion. Texas Longhorns account for a substantial portion of beef production in the United States, with a staggering 15 to 20 percent of the nation's beef coming from the state. This substantial contribution directly impacts the availability and pricing of beef across the U.S. Thanks to the sheer scale of Texas Longhorn ranching, there's a consistent supply of beef products to meet the demands of the American market. This helps stabilize beef prices, preventing major fluctuations that could affect consumers' wallets. The market size for Texas Longhorn beef keeps steadily growing, reflecting both the demand and the premium pricing these cattle can command due to their unique characteristics and historical significance. Domestically, the consumption of Longhorn beef has seen an upward trend, with the increasing preference for grass-fed and sustainably raised beef among American consumers. Longhorn beef, known for its leaner meat and distinctive flavor, has gained popularity. This shift in consumer preference has further invigorated the market, leading to a surge in demand both in retail and in the culinary scene, where Longhorn beef is often featured in high-end restaurants across the country. In terms of exports, Texas plays a pivotal role in the U.S. beef market, with a sizable percentage of its production being shipped overseas. The state is responsible for a notable fraction of America's beef exports. This export market not only bolsters the state's economy, but also places Texas Longhorn beef on the global stage, showcasing its quality and heritage. Cattle ranching is not all sunshine and flowers, though. Cattle ranching confronts a trio of challenges disease, weather extremities, and market fluctuations. Each of these factors exerts a tangible impact on the industry, necessitating adaptive strategies by ranchers. Disease poses a constant threat to cattle health and productivity. For instance, a recent outbreak of bovine respiratory disease affected approximately 5% of the cattle in the region, translating to economic losses in the millions. In response, ranchers have intensified their vaccination efforts. Annually, over 1.2 million doses of vaccines are administered across Texas ranches, a strategic move to bolster herd immunity and minimize disease spread. Responsibilities on a cattle ranch are unceasing. Ensuring the health and well-being of 2 million longhorns is a round-the-clock endeavor. It involves monitoring their nutrition, tending to injuries, and providing veterinary care when needed. Ranchers also oversee breeding programs, ensuring the continuation of quality bloodlines. Managing such a vast herd requires skill and experience. Ranchers must possess a keen eye for detail, knowing each animal by sight. They strategize the rotation of pastures for optimal grazing and monitor water sources to keep the herd hydrated. In emergencies, like a sudden illness outbreak, they act swiftly to isolate affected animals and prevent the spread. 
Weather in Texas is another unpredictable element, swinging from scorching droughts to destructive floods. These extremes challenge the traditional ranching methods, leading to a loss of up to 10% in annual cattle productivity. To combat these weather challenges, ranchers have invested heavily in weather-resistant infrastructure. Over the past decade, expenditures have exceeded 100 million on facilities like covered feeding areas and improved water storage systems, ensuring that cattle remain nourished and safe regardless of weather conditions. Market fluctuations also play a critical role in the ranching business. The beef market is volatile, with prices swinging by as much as 20% within a year, directly affecting ranchers' revenues. To mitigate this, Texas ranchers have diversified their income streams. By incorporating agritourism and selling artisanal beef products, they've managed to offset up to 15% of the losses caused by market downturns. In essence, the Texas Longhorns are the backbone of American beef, ensuring that there's enough beef to go around and that it remains affordable for all. It's a story of how numbers on a Texas ranch translate to meals on American plates day after day. These adaptive strategies showcase the resilience and ingenuity of Texas cattle ranchers. By confronting challenges head-on with practical solutions, they ensure the sustainability and prosperity of Longhorn cattle farming.